Hello. Um, I think Leah has put out about this live, so I'm quickly going to go on and uh, invite people to this um, video, which I, is really important to me. Um, I just want to start by letting you know that I've absolutely sobbed my heart out at this story. Um, it's not very pleasant, so I'm going to give you fair warning. It's not really something that we didn't necessarily know about. Uh, certainly I knew about it and I've been reporting on it, but just a couple of the things in there have really, really upset me. Um, and I just want to talk to you about it, let you know. I want the message to get out and um, I, don't, I don't want this to go unnoticed or for people to be able to get away with this, to be honest with you, at all. So I've just invited a few people, um, and I can see that there's a few of you on already, so um, thank you. Um, so, how are you all today? I'm just waiting for people to come on before I talk about it and tell you what's been going on. and. I'm sorry if I get upset. I had to call Leah after what happened. Um, and I was absolutely in floods of tears. And I just needed somebody to talk to, really. Um, I don't think anybody will realise that the people that have seen this and have worked with it are completely traumatised by what they're seeing. Um, and will be for a long time. Sorry, I've got to read what I've got as well. Um, I'm not looking for sympathy over it at all, but it's real. So, I mean, you know that I've been talking for a long time about what has happened to the elderly people in care. And I started first making comments about this on Facebook in June. And I didn't really think that people were listening. So I made a live video um, on the 30th of June Um I think it was, or the 1st of July, and um, I put it out and it's had 100,000 views. So I know that people appreciate the message and want to hear about this and it means something to them. And I've also acquired 3,000 followers and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm a nobody. Um, and I'm just somebody that wants to tell people what is happening. So I've been lucky enough since then to have interviews and be able to speak about what is happening to raise issues on to raise awareness sorry on this issue and i hope the message is reaching out and getting out to some people um and that they know that they're not alone for a start whistleblowers have come forward and i'm collecting their stories and i'm collecting the stories of the family so that they the families that this has happened to so that when there is a reckoning and there will be that I have got that information to be able to pass on to people. So today what has happened is I had a whistleblower contact me, who I've spoken to, I've verified this person, they are a real person, they're not a nutter or some conspiracy theorist. People get like to say that we're conspiracy theorists, this person is not, they're a real person. They are working in a home, they've given me their full name, they've given me the name of the home. I'm not yet going to release that to, to you guys publicly because there's a process that we're going through. But that person has agreed that I can read out what they sent me. And I want you all to know that this is the truth of what is happening. So I'm just going to read her email really and then um, you can tell me what you, sorry, what you think. So she said, hi Claire. Thank you for the reply. Oh, I'm seeing my manager again tomorrow and I'm telling her that this will be my last complaint before going to the CQC, which is the Care Quality Commission. But again, I'm not sure how responsive it, they will be. They don't seem to care. I'm worried that it's my word against all the GPs, the district, district nurses and the other carer, carers. What I have to say is that they have put all our residents on do not resuscitate orders and all of these residents with variable or lack of capacity are on anticipatory care pathways, which means that they are not allowed to go to hospital for any treatment, for anything, and they aren't 
to receive any antibiotics for anything whatsoever, whatever illness they've got. Since this pandemic, in inverted commas, started, we haven't had a single GP visit the patients at our home. When any, whenever anyone gets ill, and this is ill not related to COVID because we haven't got it in my care home, they automatically put them on end of life. This is now what really gets me, a nil by mouth. And they discontinue all their medication because they say they're at risk of aspiration, which is ridiculous. Sorry, which is ridiculous. Because if they eat, drink or have medication, there is a small chance that they could aspirate. But if they're nil by mouth, then they will die from dehydration and starvation. Myself and another carer on night have had to resort to buying jars of pureed baby food and feeding the residents and giving them drinks after making them aware of the risk of aspiration and getting their consent just so that they can have food and drink. Sorry. Along with this, the GPs are remotely prescribing end-of-life medication, which is morphine and modazolam injections, and these are being misused. They, all our clients have had their usual medication taken away, which is regular pain relief such as paracetamol and codeine, sorry, and all their anxiety, antidepressant and antipsychotic medication, which a lot of our clients are on. The district nurses then come into the home to give end of life drugs because with the withdrawal of usual medication, the resident is showing signs of pain and anxiety, which of course they would. The morphine should only be used for extreme pain when nothing else helps. And this knocks the individuals out. And especially when they're not eating and drinking and losing weight. This means it's even harder to get any fluids in them. The midazolam is given at end of life for sedation and terminal restlessness and agitation. <laughs> However, this suppresses the individual's breathing and quickens along their death. No other alternatives of pain relief are given. There's no pain patches, no liquid paracetamol. They just put them straight onto the hard stuff, which once started is only a matter of days before that resident passes away. However, this has all been okayed by the doctors and the nurses. And as the need for analgesia is subjective, I don't know how much evidence I can find or even if I will be believed. But I have collected evidence of fluid charts. I've worked in this home for over two years and I have never seen anything like this when it comes to end of life and just writing people off. I believe it's a human right to have right to life and they are committing euthanasia so much for them protecting the vulnerable. So I've had to phone up this person and speak to them and say to them, A, that I think that they're really brave for trusting me to tell me the story. I absolutely wanted to go to the police straight away I was going to get in my car and drive to where the home is and go and and get the police. But I don't even trust that they will do anything. I feel so powerless to get anybody to look at this. And I've had to tell this person, don't go to the CQC. If you do, they will bury it. They will bury it. They will cover up the evidence and you will lose your job. And there will be nobody going in and feeding these people with the pureed baby food that you are feeding them to keep them alive and 
just in case anybody thinks that this is normal and what you do to people on an end of life pathway it is not the liverpool pathway was disbanded and i think it was in 2014 because it was it might even have been before then and yes you have a right to refuse life-sustaining treatment but that is has to come from you and if you can't consent to that because you haven't got capacity then that has to be made at a best interest meeting and that decision has to be documented and it has to be taken in appropriate ways which i know isn't being done and even then if you are not allowed to take away somebody's hydration and somebody's pain medication you are not allowed to that is illegal that is wrong and these doctors and these nurses and these care home staff that are just doing it and aren't speaking out are nothing more than complicit to killing people to murdering people and this is really what is going on this is really what is happening this is why people are dying and the numbers are high they none of them have got covid none of them the, the the person i spoke to said to me they have been she can put her hand on her heart and say that two of those people in her home have been murdered and there's a third that she thinks has but they she that there's other issues that they could question and she gave me an example and said to me that one of the 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 people in the home got a chest infection um during lockdown and they basically got to, taken to hospital and they actually got treated can't believe it and the chest infection cleared up so when they went to hospital they had a covid test and it was negative and then they were discharged because the chest infection cleared up and they had another test and it was negative and when they got the discharge notes back at the home it said on it that the person had coronavirus by exposure despite the two negative tests and that all usual medication should be removed and that this person should be put on end of life this person never had a chance they didn't have capacity for a start i would like to see the best interest decision that was made i would like to see the, the deprivation of li liberty orders that these homes have got in place for people that they're locking up and, they, and that haven't got capacity because you you just you can't do that you have to get a doll's order and the court has to give that and that the, you can't get anything from the court i know that because i know what's going on so i know that they're not doing this and it's just murder it's just killing people and it's it's happening if this is happening in this one small home and you know what i've been telling you has been happening in my homes but what has really finished me off today is f having to feed these people with baby food There's one other person at that home that this person works with that is trying to, that is trying to speak out. And yes, the LCP was rebranded, but as I've said, you are not allowed to take away somebody's hydration and pain medication. You can't do that. That's illegal. And anybody, anybody that has got a relative in a care home at this time, please please, I implore you, if you are able to, go and take your relative out of it. Go and take your relative out of it. I know that many of the staff are perhaps doing the best that they can, and I'm sure that they are, but you cannot go along with this. This person that's come out today, it just does not know where to turn to get the people the help that they need, and she is scared about losing her job, because if she goes, there is nobody to feed these people, and they are just going to starve to death. I want the families of these people. I I said, do the families know? We don't even know what's been put on the death certificates because she said that she, she hasn't seen the death certificates. So we can't be sure what's on there. It'd be interesting to see if coronavirus is on there, wouldn't it, when they haven't got it in the home and we know what's happened. But I'm sure the families don't think anything of it because guess what? There's nobody going in. I mean, there are some visits allowed at this home, she said, um, for when people are dying and things but they don't know what's happening they're not being told they're not being told so it's really important that people like me 
at, I don't care. I don't care anymore about my job. I don't. I really don't. I'm ashamed to be in my profession because more of us aren't speaking up. And I'm so sorry to everybody that we're not. I so am. Um, and I just, I don't care anymore. I don't care if I get struck off. I don't, when you've got nothing to fear, you've got nothing to lose. And this is a story that needs to be told and, and something needs to be done about this. Um, I've put this particular person in touch with Eileen Chubb of Compassion in Care and I'm hoping that Eileen will be able to work with this person to give them whistleblower status to protect that person's job because they are a decent human being that is trying to save people and stop this. And I would just ask you, please, I'm sorry about the crying. I know that it's awful and I shouldn't be upset when I come on camera. Please share this video. Please, please make everybody aware of what is happening. I, I am just begging you to get this out there. The more people that find out about it, the more people maybe that stand up, the more people that then say no, enough is enough and that justice can be bought for those people and justice can be served on those people that are doing this. And I am saying to all of you, doctors and nurses, all of you, any of you that is complicit in this, I am coming for you. I am. We are. And that's it. That's all I've got to say, guys, tonight. I, I just really am so upset and I wanted I wanted to tell you all and I'm sorry for being upset. And please share this video. Please make sure everybody knows. And please, if you've got your own relatives in care and you can, please go and take them out of it. Please go and take them out of wherever they are. And I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.